thank you dr sumita and uh, aic for giving me this opportunity i think most of what i wanted to cover has been covered but i just present cases uh, i think we never get short of cases uh, so let us just discuss cases and what each one of us has done this is an ad girl as a lady who is an advocate she came to me that uh, no medical records of surgery diplopia and side gazes but not in the primary position she was twice operated outside she says first for the exotropia um she said she had exotropia and after the first surgery the i she said i went out more so again the surgeon explored and uh, that's how then she said uh, again i felt that nothing was done and this is what she presented with so she had uh, basically this is my orthoptic sheet and this she had basically uh, left exotro there was a exotropia with the hypotropia and uh, this hypotropia was increasing uh, so it was uh, it was same in in each gaze um the funny thing was that uh, she had a limitation of adduction in the right eye and a uh, limitation of uh, depression in the right eye i could not see any scar in the right eye but uh, she's and she categorically said that she was not operated in the right eye at all i could see only scars in the left eye so i said let's go inside and check that was my nasty maybe the nasty thing which i did <laughs> if, if i have to say nasty i said okay let's go in and explore i don't know anything what is happening so let's i said let's go to the left eye first uh, i don't have the video uh, but um, uh, we'll have to believe what i did uh, so left eye exploration done <laughs> so uh, i owe no adherence uh, no not touched uh, lateral rectus was already recessed 9 mm lot of fibrosis and uh, i said okay i'm not going to touch in again to the lateral rectus because it was already recessed and already lot of fibrosis medial rectus i could not even open up the conjunctiva it was could not make out what was done to it so i now i said oh god i have 50 prisms of exotropia i have to treat my hypotropia and i could not do anything in the left eye so and the patient is a lawyer no but she would not sue me at least <laughs> so yeah <laughs> no that was that i made very clear to her that you can't sue me at least i'm doing i'm trying to help you so i so i said okay let's leave the left eye i can't do anything so i went to the right eye and uh, i said okay the i did a right eye uh, inferior oblique anterior transposition that was the only thing which was left uh, with the right eye lateral rectus recession and a medial rectus plication because i thought even the medial rectus was resected some amount uh that's why maybe the small amount of adduction deficit and um, and so i did plication because i said okay that will give me a better result and she was much better so she could not sue me and she was very happy but not always it's like this uh, so this is another patient uh, operated by kali and referred as limitation of in movements both elevation and abduction and in ophthalmos of the left eye basically a uh, left um, exotropia was large angle exotropia 70 prisms uh, with a 40 left hypertropia uh, the um, measurements everything was fine because there was only seven left hypertropia left surgery and only a and an et of six prisms so nothing went wrong but the patient says i look very ugly like uh, my eyes looking small and um, i i want uh, my eye to look same so um, so um, and that was the only reason why it was referred to me said so okay you counsel because <laughs> otherwise i have done the right job there was they have corrected most of the hypotropia uh, hypertropia and i have done most of the exotropia correction the eye is straight with an exotropia of only 6 and left hypotropia of 7 uh, prisms so um went uh, so i said then she, this was her pre op pics which are sent to me so it was a clear cut case of 70 exotropia with a 40 l by r the surgical notes which was given to me was there were both eyes for a 70 three muscles done 9 and 6 uh, which was quite good enough and a left eye io recession done uh, because there was a um, 50 40 hyper in the left eye the uh, left eye io recession and a right eye ir, IR recession was also done so uh, all together uh, six muscles uh, touched and uh, and I, and but the patient is not happy i suspected maybe it could be that i was not moving up at all uh, and there was a isotropia and a small hypo i said okay maybe it could be fat adherence syndrome which is caused by disruption of the orbital fat during inferior oblique muscle surgery the clinical features of fat adherence syndrome are progressive hypotropia of the affected eye limitation of elevation especially in abduction a very positive force duction test and upper lid retraction so all these i found the findings in this in this patient So I said, okay, let me go in and see. 
because the patient was not happy at all i said okay let me try to find out if there was an inferior oblique if there was an fat adherens syndrome i would try to release some uh, you know the adherens which is there or, and or operate on the inferior rectus of the left eye do a small amount of recession of the inferior rectus of the left eye because i was not moving up did an fdt of the medial rectus of the left eye and the lateral rectus uh, and this was what i planned okay uh, i'll go in do a small medial rectus because small amount of eso uh, and uh, i'll or i'll just botox on the medial rectus not go much and um, inferior rectus if it is tight i will just do a recession so this was what i had planned and this was what i got also uh but i did something else so, so because when i went in uh, inferior oblique there were uh, in fact uh, the inferior oblique was quite clean it was recessed uh, exactly at the place where it was supposed to be i don't know if this adherens could have been the cause of the limitation but this is a small adherens i don't know if um, anybody has actually uh, can comment on this if it has to be more this was very little adherens which i cut I means i don't even think it was causing the limitation uh so um uh, but the uh, other thing which i found was that uh, there was a medial rectus which had been uh, resected was uh, found to be uh, transposed full width downward near the inferior rectus so i'm not sure if this was the reason for this what i would like to discuss in this forum whether can this uh, shifting full width cause the limitation in elevation uh, of the patient because uh, this is what we found once and um, this is the the limitation so full width uh, the the medial rectus was transposed full width downwards near the inferior rectus so um it was supposed to be resected and uh, so this was one thing so what i did, what so i changed my management and um, uh, did a left eye medial rectus recess because small small amount of esotropia and up shifted the i said i'll just shift the whole medial rectus upwards maybe that was a reason and then botoxed on the inferior rectus so i said i will not do a recession of the inferior rectus it's already too much so a botox on the inferior rectus not very good result still post operatively patient has not followed up i think she is not very happy with me also so i don't know if she will come to any of you now so uh, be prepared so um, this yeah all uh, any of you can she can come i'm most happy like you know <laughs> because uh, there is a small but i would like to discuss uh, what to do next uh, because she, um, there is a light eye scleral show uh, the inferior rectus recession has been done maybe that could be one factor which we could tackle later on or should i repeat the botox in the left eye inferior rectus uh, already we botoxed once now it is 4 months she has not come for follow up though i have been repeated i thought before the ios i could get a but i've not been uh, she didn't follow up so um, what i would say is um, my only advice i would say is that don't do too many muscles at one time i don't know if this is practical in our scenario in indian scenario uh, but i think we should stage and um, otherwise the surgery was practically very nice done for all the uh, for all what is required so i would say that maybe uh, do an inferior rectus advancement we'll have to do an adjustable because it's only six hypo um, so i don't uh, that could be one thing i just present the last case i don't know if i have time um this is uh, again a case uh, came with op already residual hypotropia uh, around 30 prisms of hypotropia operated for browns that's what the nose says there was chicken chucha done elsewhere and uh, there was a still a face turn to the right there was 10 exo uh, and uh, there was a hypotropia of around 30 prisms uh, in the so i said okay this is a clear cut so already chicken sucha has been done i'll just do an fdt of the superior oblique and plan i planned that i will go and do a right eye superior rectus and inferior rectus for the residual hypo in the right eye i will not touch the left eye but uh, intraoperatively i did the fdt and found that the superior oblique was still tight so i was tempted that i will not touch now the i'll go back to my superior oblique and see what it is and uh, superior oblique uh, when i when we explored um, it showed a nice chicken suture uh this chicken suture was there so um i don't know how how i mean i am seeing for the first time what are the effect of this it was there and i just cut it i just cut the superior oblique uh, did a total tenotomy but this must be how it looks the chicken suture after the surgery because it was lengthened and it was having the but uh the fdt showed that it was still tight so maybe one of the learnings is keep doing fdt even after you do a chicken suture i think don't um, uh, mean maybe you'll have to go back and do it again because if it's tight i think you should not leave it like that that one of the learnings and uh, i uh, had planned a left eye lateral rectus recess but i thought like there is an eso uh, there's an exo i'm doing a tenotomy maybe i'll get a 6 to 8 prisms ex, uh, eso because of my uh, superior oblique tenotomy and i did the right eye superior rectus recess for the hypo so, uh, 
so this is what i planned i did not touch the lateral rectus so post operatively i got a um, i got a negative fdt uh, for the superior oblique uh, so this is what i did and a right eye superior rectus recess only i did and did not touch superior oblique not me and i did not touch the lateral rectus then i felt so bad because after surgery the 10 exo was there and the parents were like you have still my exo left like they are not bother about the tight superior oblique or they are not bother about the hypo so they has they, have, they are saying that okay now this still the 10 exo is remaining and uh, it looks uh, there so i was like oh god the tenotomy has given me no effect uh, and for surprising i know the right eye dvd started coming in it was around eight prisms it was not seen before and uh, right eye showed dvd um so what i did was i just gave glasses the face turn had gone but my tenotomy i gave glasses which has hidden the uh, at least the exotropia and uh, so i have decided to leave there was a right eye manifesting dvd sometimes but uh, it is because with the glasses the dvd and the exo is not seen so i have left it alone but i don't know what next if so i'll go ahead and do the lateral rectus recess that's what my plan is so any comments any discussion because i have got more case but i think i'll just leave it like that but i think i think uh, the esposi and dr sumita and dr rishi may all have told me to put this slide for the esposi so i have put the slide <laughs> so any comments uh, or any uh, uh, rohit and ramesh and sumita anything which i should do for the second case should i repeat the inferior rectus botox or or right eye advancement of the inferior rectus I think, uh, <laughs> no i can't leave it alone yeah give it some time yeah i think it's the second case is just a few days post op i think yeah a few days post op yeah it's one uh, two weeks post op yeah between the horizontal deviation due to dvd and a horizontal deviation due to exotropy if you don't differentiate you will end up with this kind of problems i think uh, when you do a cover test when uh, with both eyes fixing or either eye fixing you will see the difference in the measurement in between the both eyes right eye fixing left and eye. Uh, they will have an nystagmus as you said a fine nystagmus not always they could also have a dvd component which most could have come in have this DVD. patient most of them will have dvd yeah. very rarely you will have pure dhd yes sir most of them would have some uh, dvd and some intorsion also some intorsional component will be there but it's surprising so. the superior it not we didn't call any effect on the horizontal so that's what i thought but generally normally <laughs> unless it's a very tight tight yeah so you are not going to have a much yeah horizontal way yeah in so brown yes in congenital it's already uh, done once no so it yeah, i should have that so now it's not so tight so that although you could see that <laughs> cut was a little fibrosis period which you have to leave after you cut the but it was still it didn't look like that it was that kind of probably both superior oblique it's a, if it is tight especially in brown syndrome you will get a lot of effect on horizontal otherwise not much even inferior oblique when you do a bilateral it does not give much in fact you have to be careful in congenital exotropes or infantile exotropes where there is superior oblique overaction because the severe superior oblique overaction or the tight superior obliques are responsible for the exotropia to manifest otherwise moderate exotropes kids would not they'll be able to fuse so so they are the ones you have to be very careful you think it's a very large exo in primary case you plan for superior obliques along with a large uh, lr recessions and then you land up with a consecutive so you have to be a little conven- a little less on the horizontal i think there is a role for small over corrections or under corrections for prisms as well as for optical corrections like glasses um, we didn't discuss it but 
you should always keep that in mind also especially you could do a lot of decentration of glasses because most of these patients yes. do have yeah, refractive yes. errors also yeah. so glass uh, prisms must be considered okay. for a small up to 10 prisms you can easily correct it using prisms doesn't so, work for torsion though <laughs> so thank you so much ma'am for making me part of this uh, i can say legendary cases i saw with uh, dr rohit sir's cases and suma madam's cases i mean my, i am not going to have a huge i mean this uh, for me i have not done a lot of uh, oblique resurgeries so i would be concentrating more on uh, uh, preventive <laughs> aspect of not uh, you know going for a resurgery because uh, these are these are really they are, they are only uh, the trained people who do oblique muscles so we we don't get lot of resurgeries and these are all peculiar muscles intra oblique may be forgiving but superior oblique is not at all forgiving so under unless we are pretty sure that you know we are good at it or we can do it and it, the patient needs it we should not embark into it and second thing is more uh, less is more in superior oblique so we should uh, you know if the chicken suture was done it is okay if there is a residual rather than going for a superior oblique palsy which will create bigger problems and torsion is very difficult to manage once you do a land up into superior oblique palsy so these are uh, applied aspects of anatomy and uh, this is what uh, i was saying about uh, preventive aspect of uh, uh, intra oblique the dissections are very very important not running oh. video is not running a photograph aa gaya can i use my laptop यार मुझे मत दिखाओ अब तो कम से कम वीडियो दिखा दो सो दिस सो वी व्हाट वी डू इज वी ट्राई टू यू नो व्हाट आई ऑलवेज ट्राई टू टेल इज दैट यू हुक इट अंडर डायरेक्ट विजुअलाइजेशन एंड देन ट्राई टू गो एंड टेक द होल मसल एंड वंस यू आर होल्डिंग द मसल वंस यू हैव डिसेक्टेड द मसल ट्राई टू सी वेदर यू कैन सी द स्क्लेरा बिहाइंड इट और नॉट सो वंस यू कट द दिस पर्टिकुलर सेप्टम यू ट्राई टू सी between the two hooks if you can see the sclera or not only then you are pretty sure that the muscle is complete most of the problems normally as we have discussed now extensively that infraobli is a, is like your mother and it is a fairly forgiving surgery so most of the infraobli surgeries are forgiving if it is completely hooked yeah so it is jokes apart so if there is persistent in the overaction of infraobli there has to be some part which has been left or you have done little less for uh, yeah, yeah, what i mean to say is that your uh, your surgical dosage is little less hooking is crucial in primary surgery there have been uh, there is a good article in ajo on multiple bellies or insertion and uh, a weaker procedure could have been done, done for a larger overaction so what is to be done is that if there is a mild to moderate uh, uh, mild to moderate overaction still there is a persistent of that you can do anteriorization you can uh, pull it little anterior newer insertion can be more anterior or you can go for a if there is a severe overaction you can go for a nasal enterization there is no hypertropia my surgical choice would be myectomy now this is when you have uh, slightly overdone uh, the infraoblique or you are you are going for unilateral surgery and you have done an uh, infraoblique enterization this is basically a co contraction syndrome as uh, dr roj showed one patient where he did a total anterior positioning of uh, total anteriorization of infra oblique what happens is when patient tries to look up both superior rectus and infra oblique are contracting so it is more like a co contraction syndrome where elevation would be restricted and there will be more of a y pattern so there will be very minimal infra oblique overaction in the adduction but when the patient tries to look up there will be a good amount of uh, good amount of uh, lag in that so in some of the patients we we have done i'm i mean i am a very big fan of uh, adjustable and all the patients which i was looking as so many surgeries were done i would always go for an adjustable and even for infra oblique i have tried out adjustable infra oblique surgeries in patients where i do unilateral infra oblique anteriorization i try to keep it like this and then if there is still a persistent Uh, intra oblique overaction i will try to pull it back so it is reverse not as we do lateral rectus surgery where if there is some angle or medial rectus where we directly recess depending on the angle this would be reverse because we are doing anteriorization was it too heavy 
okay so if you do an intraoblique surgery you are plan no not the muscle the whole dose <laughs> of going reverse indirectly proportional to directly proportional so when you do intraoblique surgery you try to bring the eye down and if if the eye is still up you pull the muscle rather than recessing it still heavy okay we will we'll drop it there <laughs> so so, so supraoblique also we have uh, discussed enough about the personal life of supraoblique so <laughs> supraoblique yes yes i was pointing at supraoblique so now we have hooked the superior rectus and we are trying to hook the supraoblique and i, I would uh, uh, i would show that you know supraoblique also this is only partial muscle which has been hooked and the posterior fibers are still remaining so we have to go more posterior but uh, you have to be careful you have to use a barbie's retractor you have to retract and then try to see posterior fibers and hook them so you can see the vortex vein it is uh, this here the, here is the this is the vortex vein so you have to be you have see now the whole super oblique is there so you see we have made a partial dent in super oblique since we were planning to do a ptso it was not much of a problem we removed those fibers and left 2 mm anteriorly so super oblique also you have to be careful uh, super oblique resurgeries are very difficult we, i was fortunate enough to see video of uh, dr suma madam she showed a super oblique chicken suture resurgery but i don't have a, a similar video but fibrosis is a big issue to differentiate between tendon and fibrosis would be very difficult in super oblique especially so in weakening procedures uh, you know uh, ptso or expander may extrude uh it can be removed if it is associated with esoparesis scenario better to go for intraoblique weakening procedure along with that if it is very tight as ma'am showed uh, you can do a chicken suture if it is there as a chicken suture uh, we can uh, remove and do a clean tenotomy and we can add intraoblique depending on the primary position angle in the tuck on table fdt is a must and uh, in immediate post op revision and reducing the amount of tuck uh has to be done late post op removal of non absorbed suture fibrosis if you have done a tuck and patient has come to you after say somewhere somewhere else he has got operated we have to do a supraoblique weakening procedure uh, like chicken suture harada ito again i most of the harada itos i do are adjustable so never had a problem and they are easily reversible early post op so you have to be very careful with harada ito because you are doing it purely for torsion harada ito is mainly for torsion it doesn't give you any uh, significant weakening effect in any of the gazes of super oblique or even in primary position so you can uh, do a adjustable harada ito and uh, see torsion intra op post op and as dr gatton used to teach you can take an indirect ophthalmoscope see the torsion inside the ot the only thing is it would be with an indirect ophthalmoscope so it will be reverse picture of what you will be doing fundus pictures can always help not intraop but it can help so this was i am just showing that we did a tuck and we tried to do a, a fdt the only tip is when you do fdt post tuck it should uh, the, your uh, eye should be able to go just above the punctum so that's the take home message is that as uh, i mean this the first point has been exclusively dealt with torsion assessment both subjectively and objectively is very very important this gives you very good clues the lot of times you know you see patients where you feel that maybe i can touch infraoblique if you look at the torsion it would become very clear whether this particular patient needs a uh, 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 infraoblique surgery or not resurgeries are pretty difficult in both the scenarios but uh, still easier in infraoblique you can do a myectomy at any difficult case but would be difficult for supraoblique because you may have to think of supraoblique paresis a dissection should be slow and gentle in all resurgeries cut as little because identification is difficult thank you so much I have not done a nasal myectomy, but I have done nasal enterization. Maybe uh, Ramesh or Rohit. Yeah, I have done nasal transpositions. Although, again, how much? Shake it below the muscle or above the muscle? Above the muscle, above the inferior rectus. Above, it goes rotates. So you get yeah. Yeah. Yes, you could vary. You, you could vary. Nasal transpositions are better. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
SOP superior oblique palsies and for DVD. So SOP, I, I feel that uh, it's a very, very good surgery. In fact, it helps us to bring about a little bit of in cyclo torsion, the significant yes. amount of 10 to 12 degree torsional change by IOANT. So that's very good. Uh, if if the vertical is more in superior oblique palsies, I would think in terms of an iliate and nanking or even a plus two iliate and nanking. If the torsion is more in superior oblique SOPs, then I would think in terms of a anterior nasal transposition because you get a huge torsional. Yes, correction. torsion difference is pretty significant. Yes, that, so you have to. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so you don't get significant anti elevation with the anterior nasal transposition, but then if you have a significant vertical up to you can correct with the anterior transposition uh, e ENN or plus two, you can correct up to twenty prisms of vertical deviation. So if you're looking for that, more often than not, most patients have been happy. One patient I can never forget because she was a basketball player and she was very very unhappy because of the anti elevation. But yeah, you will see some amount of anti elevation. It does get a little better with time, but anti-elevation will happen the moment you start anterior positioning. I'll just mention about inferior oblique resurgery. Um, we've had, unfortunately, to do a fair amount, and initial ones, I actually cut the IR. I started uh, dissecting, and I didn't realize it was just adherent to the inferior rectus. I hooked, I thought I just have the IO, and then I started disinserting, and I could see the insertion of the inferior rectus, the insertion line. Obviously, it was smooth, clean line, so I stopped halfway, resutured the IR back. So again, you have to be very careful in any resurgery, identify the muscle carefully, particularly IOs because they start getting adherent to the adjacent muscle. Uh, can, can I just make a point about the inferior oblique? One of the problems of uh, operating on the inferior oblique is you must use an operating microscope. If you do not use operating microscope, you always end up with uh, difficulties. Uh, some time ago, I presented what is called as a recessing inferior oblique without suture, without hook, uh, inferior oblique recession. I showed the uh, video where you can hold on to the, the sheet and pull it gradually, hand over hand technique. And when you do that, the inferior oblique presents itself right at the entrance. Once you had as presented at the entrance, then you go back and catch the posterior part of the inferior oblique. This I learned from uh, well, working with uh, John Lee. He's unfortunately no longer there. So what it is is the, you don't need to see the white at the back. Once you, s you don't have to always see the white. If you see the white, you are right, he said. Not always, I said. I think we are running out of time. She's showing the message to conclude. So thank you. <laughs> so thank you all for attending. And I hope everybody had a, it was an educative experience for everybody. Thank you.